In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the charging port on the iPhone 11 Pro. Let's get started by powering down the device and removing the two pentalobe screws either side of the lightning connector at the bottom of the phone. Just as a little side note, whilst I take those first two screws out, I will be using one of these little magnetic mats to keep things organized. You can draw on it and everything if it helps you. Uh, but of course, this video is gonna be helpful too. Once you remove those screws, take a single-sided razor blade and create a small gap in the bottom of the device between the chassis and the edge of the screen. Once you've got that small gap, you can pry upwards to create a larger gap, big enough to insert a plastic guitar pick like this one. And then we're going to slide that along the right hand edge of the screen, along the bottom edge of the screen, all the way back and along the left hand edge of the screen. As always, we'll leave the top untouched because we're going to lift from the bottom just a centimeter or so, wiggle it from side to side, and lift upwards, opening it just like a book from the back cover. We now need to remove the screen on this one. So go ahead and remove the two Y000 tri-wing screws from this little shield here to reveal the battery cover and then use a plastic spudger to disconnect the battery connector. That's going to isolate power from the device now so that we're safe to work on the rest of the phone. Go ahead with the tri-wing screwdriver again and remove the six tri-wing screws that hold down this shield that's home to the screen connectors. Lift that up with the tweezers again and then use the plastic spudger to disconnect the screen connectors, which is this one here. And then this one. And finally, this one. That means we can now lift away the screen. A bit of the adhesive comes away with it as well. For the charging port, we need to disconnect this flex cable here, as well as the larger one that's attached to it. Pop them up like that. And then it's optional really, but you should be able to just pop those out from underneath that bracket there. You don't have to remove it. We now get the shield removed. So we've got four more tri-wing screws holding that down. Remove all four of those, then lift up the shield with tweezers and disconnect all the connectors underneath. With those lifted, we're gonna move on to the loudspeaker now. That's held down by a crosshead screw just here. And another one in the bottom right. And then there's a standoff screw in the top left of the loudspeaker. We can now use the tweezers to lift that thing up and pull it out. You might find that it's stuck down at the bottom. Just pull it out of the way. There is a couple of tri-wing screws down in this bottom right corner. Remove those two as well whilst we're down working in this area. We'll start coming in from this side and across now. So remove the tri-wing screw from the left side of the tactic engine. The other tri-wing screw in the very bottom left. This one just below the tactic engine. And the crosshead screw that sits just down here. Then we've got one more standoff screw that we can remove on the right side of the Taptic engine. That should allow us to remove the vibration motor now. Use tweezers to pop that out and then tweezers again to remove this shield here, which is actually stuck down on top of the barometer sensor. So it might be a bit awkward to remove it. There's another couple of standoff screws here. Remove those two and store them for later. Another standoff screw just here. And then we've got one more tri-wing screw just in the side here. As with just about all iPhones, you'll have to stand it up on its edge now to get the last two screws from the very bottom here. This barometer sensor unfolds now, or pressure sensor, as well as the microphone to release this plastic sort of jig what holds them in place and we should now be able to remove this charging port flex cable starting off in this bottom corner here just carefully lifting it up because these are actually refurbishable so I'm trying my best not to damage any of it whilst I'm removing it 
it's also good practice if you ever need to remove any from a live device. That lifts out quite easily, although it is stuck down a little bit, so you might need to give it a little tug. The part that we're using is a genuine pulled Apple part, and I've literally just pulled it from another iPhone 11 Pro. And we'll just begin reassembly by reversing the steps that we've just taken to remove it. Starting off by placing it down, and then we'll line up the bottom screws first. And I'm just gonna make sure that this little grounding pin, what sits here, sits on top of it and we can stand it up and get those two crosshead screws in the very bottom. These are the two most awkward screws to get in, I think. And I always go for these two triwing screws. This just helps the whole sort of shape of it all line up and everything. So we've got that one. Now, before those two standoff screws go in as well, we're gonna get that little jig in for the barometer and microphone sensor. With that jig in place, we can place down the barometer sensor and microphone. There is one standoff screw just here, the smaller of the two, and another one just here. I'm gonna connect these two connectors. One of them is for the battery, but it's not gonna affect anything whilst we're reinstalling everything. Don't worry about that. because next we're going in with the Taptic engine, reconnecting it up there. Then we can place this metal shield back on just here before finally going ahead with these tri-wing screws, which you got the longer of the four, I think it was. What we'll holds the Taptic engine down on the left side, a crosshead screw for this one here, and then back to the triwing screws, one just there. There is one more standoff screw just to the right of the lightning connector. Then we can install our loudspeaker again. Attach it onto the connector here. And we've got this large standoff screw just here, as well as the other one just here. One crosshead screw the very bottom right, and another one just above it. The last part of this bottom assembly is this little shield that goes on top and is secured down with the four tri-wing screws. With all that re-secured now, realign the port under here. It looks like it's a bit more difficult than I anticipated, so I'll remove these two drawing screws here, lift up this shield, place that on top, and then re-secure this little shield back down with the two drawing screws. We can plug the charging port back in now, just here and here. And then I'm just going to clean the edges of this device with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And then brush it clean with a little toothbrush before applying a new dust and moisture resistant seal. As always, we line it up in the top left first, along the left hand edge, and the rest of it will follow suit like that. Apply pressure with the back edge of the spudger before reinstalling the screen. Connecting the screen is fairly simple. If you offer up this flex cable first, line it up over its FPC connector and apply pressure. And then the rest should follow in alignment with the touch, ear speaker, and then battery. We can now reattach the shield as well as the six tri-wing screws that hold down that shield. If you've had a go at this repair yourself, let me know how you get on in the comments below. I know sometimes people have disasters with these and we do enjoy reading them ones the best, especially the ones that blame us for all their errors. With those secured, we re-secure the battery shield down now 
two tri-way screws. Then we can fold down the screen, re-secure it in the top here, squeeze it into place on the edges, and finally reinstall the two pentalab screws at the bottom of the phone. Just remember there's a few things to test once this is turned on, such as the loudspeaker vibration, obviously the charging function, just make sure everything's working good. Thank you for watching and see you next time.